in very experienced meditators, like Tibetan monks who've been in a cave for nine years, mm -hmm. they are able to have the same effect on their brain on functional MRIs as those people who take psilocybin or LSD. Hi, I'm Louis Legg, one of the producers of the Doctor's Pharmacy podcast. Research on psychedelics is currently seeing a renewed interest from the medical community. From anxiety and depression to addiction and even overcoming the fear of death, research is showing psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy has a lot to offer. Earlier this year, Dr. Hyman spoke with best-selling author and journalist Michael Pollan and with clinical psychologist Dr. Anthony Bossis about the area of the brain which gets suppressed with psychedelics and how the ego is also housed in this same part of the brain. Let's listen in starting with Dr. Hyman's conversation with Michael Pollan. I heard you speak at South by Southwest and you were talking about this part of the brain called the deep default mode network. Mo mo default mode network. And, and you said something that sort of just caught my attention, which is that in very experienced meditators, like Tibetan monks who've been in a cave for nine years, mm -hmm. they're able to have the same effect on their brain on functional MRIs as those people who take psilocybin or LSD, yeah. that it, it suppresses this part of the brain that's sort of our ego. Yeah, I mean, right? it's, uh, you Can know. you talk the, about that? Yeah, the, well, it's, this is one of the most interesting findings in the, in the kind of basic science around uh, psychedelics. They began putting people into MRI machines and administering uh, LSD and psilocybin, and they wanted to see what, their, what was going on in their brains, what was activated, what was deactivated. Their expectation was that there would be general activation because there's such fireworks, right, that people report in the experience. The big surprise was there was a deactivation of this default mode network, which um, is a, a group of tightly linked structures, uh, connects the prefrontal cortex to the posterior singular cortex to a deeper, older uh, structures involved in memory and emotion. Pretty impressive for a journalist to know those brain parts <laughs> I'm, i still struggle with brain anatomy frankly it's like neuroanatomy that's not easy it's not easy at all and um it's just like a big mush of like this jello thing but there's so much anatomy in it it's it like, so specific <laughs> and you know our thinking now about the brain is it's, it is very networked it's not about individual parts do very specific things they're all linked in very interesting ways and the linkages are just as important so the default mode network is involved in self-reflection uh theory of mind the ability to impute mental states to others, a time travel, the ability to think about the future and the past, which mm. you really need to construct an identity, yeah. right? I mean, you, I mean, Oliver Sacks showed us if you don't have a memory, you, you don't have an identity. Mm. Um, and uh, the so-called autobiographical self, which is the, the function of kind of building the story of who we are out of what happens to us. And that happens, appears to happen in the posterior cingulate cortex. So yeah, it, to the extent that the ego has an address, it would be in the default mode network. And this uh, is, is basically, it's not completely turned off, but it's down-regulated. And when they also did similar fMRIs of meditators, long-term meditators with 10,000 hours of experience, they found the same pattern, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the deactivation of the default mode network, which, which makes sense in, in that both involve ego dissolution, yeah. right? I mean, you're you're transcending your ego in meditation if you're very experienced uh, and quieting the part of the self chatter. I mean, because because the default mode network is where you you go to mind wander, worry, uh, all that. Well, it's, that's it. I mean, it's exactly. I think you're hitting on something that's so key, which is that suffering comes from identifying with your ego, and that the liberation of suffering, according to the Buddhist tradition, is yeah. realizing that that's just an illusion. And, and that you're not have. really separate and that the right. meditation is a technique to help you actually realize that and break that attachment to your worries or right. or, or everything really and that attachment is the basis of, of suffering yeah i mean the buddhists figured this out a really long time it's ago amazing and now you know neuroscience is moving in a very similar direction we as humans think that everything we see feel smell touch here is all that there is but we know that there are many other sensory experiences that we don't have the bandwidth for our spectrum of light, our spectrum of hearing, our spectrum of smell, our spectrum of temperature sensation. I mean, snakes can actually have this massive ability mm. to detect temperature changes so they can see if there's something warm around them to it's go incredible. bite or eat, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and yet we think well, what we see is all there is, right? It's a, it's a very interesting thing. And so maybe these drugs actually help us expand our sensory ability to kind of process information or see different things or, relate to what we're doing differently it seems to do that mark yeah it's um it's easy to talk about the biology a lot because we can see that as well 
in terms of you know fMRIs and PET scans. What I what I find remarkable is that it seems to again trigger something that's naturally occurring in humans. There's a recent Pew study that shows that 49 percent of people report having mystical experiences in their lives just naturally. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, these medicines provoke promote in a very significant way hours of the experience versus a few minutes in terms of the neurobiology we, we know that it's it activates upon a serotonergic receptor um, which is the primary receptor for these medicines when that receptor is blocked um, the experiences don't happen uh, mm. the same way so it is serotonergically modulated media so like super prozac or <laughs> well you know we know very little about the neuroscience but we know this we know the serotonin um and there's now speculation something called the default mode network gets quiets down which is kind of this the part of the the brain that links to part of our mind that forms a sense of self um the so-called ego um and that quiets down but other parts of the brain might be able to cross talk in a more uh direct way so what i'm struck by is that you know we're wired for meaning right and these experiences, meaning making, transcendence, ineffability, sacredness, awe, unity, um, happen naturally. So something in our nature has us wired for these incredible experiences that seem pro ethical and pro social. And right, um, I mean, you said something really important, which is they help you dissolve the ego. Because right. the sense of right, the we meaning. live in a very structured view of the world most of the time. Most of us with very limited understanding of our connection to everything else. So. Almost like we we live in this world where we're focused on our ego and our own life and our own needs and our own purpose and our own connections, but not really understanding the the ways in which we're connected to everything that matters. And I think that's what these drugs seem to do. They seem to sort of break down and dissolve the ego, which can take decades of meditation. It's almost like a spiritual shortcut. Dr. Hyman further explored this topic with Daniel Goleman, the best-selling author of Altered Traits, Science Reveals How Meditation Changes Your Mind, Brain, and Body. Uh, you know, I was listening to Michael Pollan, who's going to be on our podcast, talk about the effect of psychedelic drugs yes. and the research going on around mm -hmm. how they affect the brain. Yes. And he says the they suppress something called the default mode network, which is this That's new right. area of the brain that was recently discovered that it seems to be where the ego lives, where the sense it's of separation from... Our thoughts of ourself, my worries... What's wrong in my relationships? All of that is default. Network. Right, it's the I, the, the little yeah, I yeah. of the little self, which right. is all about the threat uh -huh. to the ego, which is yes. which is protective and defensive and fearful, and it's what we want to right. protect and control things with. And when that area gets suppressed with psychedelics, it allows you to feel one with the world and you know connection to everybody and love and and your your little self gives way to the big self exactly and the same thing happens with meditation well which is there's a difference fascinating. it's a very big difference we call our book altered traits not altered states yeah because michael is talking about an altered state yes the minute that drug leaves your body i'm sorry the That's self it. comes back sure so meditation changes the brain in a lasting way mm -hmm. that's the altered trait and it's a very important difference and that's what causes suffering, right? According to the Buddhist philosophy, suffering is your attachment to things being a certain way, which is usually driven by your ego. Yes, and liking or disliking this or that, and worrying about this thing and that person and all of that. Yeah. The ego is the source of suffering. Yeah. And that's one thing that we found is that the part of the brain where the ego lives, so to speak, gets smaller. Yeah. It reduces in meditators, in yogis, in long-term meditators. That's fascinating. We have only begun to scratch the surface of the intricacies of the human brain, and I for one am excited to see what we learn from here. If you'd like to learn more about anything you've heard in today's episode, be sure to check out Dr. Hyman's full-length interviews with Michael Pollan, Anthony Bossis, and Daniel Goleman. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider rating us on Apple Podcasts and sharing this episode with a friend. Until next time, thanks for listening.